serious learning in certain uh, people who put their entire energies, their entire strength into learning. A mature Talmud Chacham, someone who has studied and has learned, knows the technique. What, what, what is this learning really about? And he will tell you that the most important step in learning something is to first understand the terminology. Very interesting thing. <coughs> A big person once said, Rabbi said to Yirmi Yamaka Roya, Yirmi he showed him a, 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 a budding, a blossoming almond tree. He says, Mata Yirmi Roya. He said, to the answer, he said, Mata Shaka Roya. He says, I, I, I see a stick. It's blossoming with almonds. In his vision, in the prophecy, he showed him a branch, as I would say, of, a, of an almond tree. And he says to him, what did you see? He says, I saw a macro shocking. He said to him, hey, pastor, you see very well. And someone once asked a question, and he said, what do you mean, hey, pastor? He showed him a branch, a stick, that was blossoming with him. And he answered him what he saw. What do you mean? He says, oh, very good. Hey, Pastor Leroy, you have seen very well. Explain the following. Imagine if you're going to be 60 years and he shows you a tree. You will say, well, a tree, a man is a tree. Life is a tree. Experience is a tree. Shockades, uh, almonds, uh, those are our bees. You would begin to philosophize about everything. You would begin to abstract everything, and you would get yourself entangled in a story, and you would lose <coughs> consciousness and perception of the basic revelation. You wouldn't, you, a maka wouldn't be a maka, and a shaka wouldn't be a shaka. You would say all kinds of lot. When the Rebecca showed you, a maka shaka, he says, maka roi, he said, maka shaka dani roi, he says, I see. You define basically without becoming involved, without unrealistic abstraction. If you first define what you see, you're building, you have a basis for what you're building, you're building very well. All this is a preface in true learning and in true understanding. The first thing is you've got to define for yourself. You have to take some intellectual strength to be able to stick to the basics and to ask yourself the question, do I understand? Do I understand the basics? Do, do I have an insight? Do I have a true insight into the basics? All this I have is an introduction to something for the problem. In the Davani, in the Siddha, the most important point of view of Allah, law, the most important part of the sin is Krishna. That's the arise of the Torah commands us to eat Krishna twice a day. In the morning and the evening. That's the most significant, the most important part of the sin. Now, if the Shema is well, you read the first Pasha, you say, well, half the Hashem will accept the the whole nafshecha, even if he takes your life, the Gemara says, the whole nafshecha means if you have to give up all your money, if the person has to just walk out anyway. And for you to start, you have to be prepared to be prepared to do something. The question is, what does the Yahafta mean? You love. We spoke about it once. But I feel it's so significant, we have, there's something more here that I have to explain. What is the Yahafta? Shalom. You shall 
love the Rebbeinu love. What is love? Who love? Who love? And the early Achronim, they ask a question, a courageous question. They say, they ask, how can you love the Rebbeinu Shalom? Love, you have to be a common denominator. The Rebbeinu Shalom, ain't like good, ain't like the Musa good. The Rebbeinu Shalom is not corporeal. He has no, he has no, no body, he has no dimension. Love, for love, there has to be a common denominator. There has to be a basic. We have to have something in common. So the question is to define to ourselves what does Be'ahato mean? What do you mean? How? Yiddishkeit is not a fantasy. It's not something that you imagine, I imagine. Yiddishkeit is, 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 the Torah is, is a religion of reality. The Jews are pragmatists. We are real people. We are real. Love, 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 love. You know, in America, I remember, I remember, you know, the, the, the 60s, that the love, the love, they called love power, love power, love power. What? It was not love. It was not power. It was nothing. It was selfishness. It was meaningless. It, 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 it's nothing. And everybody went, love, 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 love. Everybody, the whole the whole country is inundated. What? What? What does the have to mean? And how is the have to come? If you want to sit down and earnestly learn the first two psukim in Krishna, you will encounter a, a tremendous. If you are the, if you are honest and the courage to be honest. What is the connection? What, what is the bridge? What, what, how do these two sentences flow into each other? Requires concentration. The they say to understand the question is a half answer. We have to clarify to ourselves what does it mean to be an Ohei Bashar? How does it express itself in life? Concretely. How, How do we reach it? Through love, we reach it. And we have to be prepared to hold the book, hold the phone up, 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 the What does it mean? How do you do it? We, who are we? Who did we see? We live in a materialistic world, in an immoral, unethical, Distorted, sick society. You said you have to love, love, love. Where are we going to come to this love? With let's ask ourselves: We have Avos Hashem. It says that you have to love the Rebbeinu So how does Hashem like that? This is a serious question. It's a very big question. The Madrish says concerning the Torah in Baratheon. Madrish brings the posse. Vo'eye etloi omoi shashuim yoim yoim. Posse is in Mishlei Ha'ezim. Shloim HaMelech is speaking about the qualities and the virtues of Torah. 
wants to know what is it Taira. The Shloyman Melech wanted to phrase it to us in a way to communicate to us what is Taira. So he said that Taira, the Levani Shloyman looks at the Taira, can you imagine an object that causes a person a lot of joy? Art to an artist, music to a musician, poetry to a poet. You show a poet, you show him every day beautiful poetry. It causes him joy. It brings him happiness and who knows what other feelings. You, you show an art critic, you, you, you open, you discover the treasury of a, a hitherto unknown art of, 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 of reverence. He, he looks at it. He's inspired. He's overjoyed. So Shlomo HaMelech said, that the relationship between the Rebbeinu Shalom and Toyer, the relationship between the Rebbeinu Shalom and Toyer, is the relationship of a person to something which is Shashuim. It's the relationship between, between, a, between, a, per, be, between a person and an object which, in, which, which evokes and elicits in him joy. This is, there's something subtle here tonight that you have to hear. It's geometric. You must hear it. In Mishlei, it says concerning the nature and the character and the quality of Teure, that Teure is something which causes Kevayoko. If it didn't say in the Pasuk, we could not say it. It's something which causes joy to the Rebbe. Sha'ashuim, yoyim yoyim, the A, S, Y, Oman, Shashuim yoin yoin that the toire the toire is something that the virtual love something that causes you joy is something that you love. It's something that you are involved in. When a person learns Torah, when a person takes his mind, when a person takes his mind and immerses it in Torah, and the person a person's mind absorbs Torah. That his mind becomes something which causes the Rabbi Shalom joy. That's an act of love. We have to understand, there's a subtlety here. And this answers a lot of questions. It says, if you would know to what extent the mitzvah of Talmud Torah is, it, it, in America it's very hard to see it. There are people, Talmud HaChachonim and Asisro, you can see it, still see it in some places. There are people who give up this whole world, and they exist with the barest essentials in the world, only to learn Torah. And they are trying to be Mekayim just with the mitzvah. How much time can I be cool? Somebody can ask a person, we have been accused of that here. We are legalists in our mind in law all the time. We are like, hey, the, the mitzvah of Talmud supersedes all this. Wow. I was such rationalists, I was such logicians, I was such intellectuals. No. Listen closely. The success of the whole universe lies in the hands of a human being. 
everything that is in the brief, all the all take for example, you learn in Chumash, you open the Chumash. You open the Chumash and you learn what was created on, on the first day, on the second day, on the third day, on the fourth day, on the fifth day, on the sixth day, Adam was created. On the sixth day, Adam was created. Imagine for a moment that everything in the Bria was created. Everything. The heavens and the earth and the fish and the animals and the grass and the fruit and the trees. Everything. Except him. All the forces of nature Everything would be created with all their beauty and all their force, except me and man wasn't created. What kind of a world would it be? It would be a world without a purpose, a sterile world, an empty world. It would be a world without a goal. When the Din Adam was created with the Tselemelech kid, there was unleashed in the cosmos a Bria, such, a, such an entity that had in him a special koya, a special force. The force to take everything that was in the world and elevate it and be annihilated and bring it to a higher purpose. If other not, if, if, all, if the whole Chumash, if the whole nice aberration were to happen and not the Bria one, it would be a sterile world. It would be a meaningless world, it would be a world without a purpose. The world receives its purpose with the Bria of Adam, with, who had the Tselemelech in, he was that device that gave the world a goal and a purpose. And the goal and the purpose was to elevate the whole world, to take, to take all the forces of the Bria and to take it someplace else and to bring it, to borrow an expression, to, br to bring it to someplace higher. That was the purpose of the Bria. That was the goal of the Bria. Without that purpose, without that tachlis, all the cultures in the Bria are the reach for the heaven. If you study physics, if you learn about the, the, the miracles of the cosmos, the miracles that there are in oneself and the miracles that there are in, in, in the entire cosmos. All those miracles and all those phenomenal forces which are beyond human intellect would be to no purpose and no reason if there wasn't man who, who through his breed gave the world a tackle in the purpose. To take, to take the whole breed and bring it out. And bring it out. How does he bring it out? Man has in his pachira, man has in his head, in his intellect, to understand, to become enlightened, to perceive that which he did not perceive before, to penetrate. That penetration, that penetration is reaching the goal and the tachlis of bringing it on. Look, look at look, look at the, the way you have to, you have to, you have to, you know, you get used to everything. You know, they say in Jewish there's an expression that if a worm burrows its way into a, a radish, which is bitter, a worm thinks it's in the sweetest place in the world. That's his government. He lives, he lives in a radish. He, thinks, he doesn't know that sugar, that's not his honey. He's living in a radish. That's the sweetest place in the world. We live in a sick society. We live in a sick society. We live in a society of, of terror, of cruelty, of sadism, of, 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 
injustice, of inequity. To, to perceive greatness, to perceive greater dimensions for a person. I, told, I didn't tell you, Mr. Shalana spoke about it. It's an interesting thing. Lessons of I just went to visit an old woman in Jerusalem who owned the house where they used to live. That's how her land was. The woman in her 70s. An older person. And she's going blind. She's blind. She's getting blind. You see what's going on here. So, Eric Shabbos, she went to visit. Is there anything I can do for you? She's a very independent person. She said, it so happens there's something that you can do. I'm running out of shed, out of oil. I need some oil. The whole situation is, she went away. She said, yeah, you're about to work on a big thing. Two things. One, this kind of work, that kind of work. She said, how much is it? No. Very good friend. There's a relationship between them. Take this. Let, let. No, I can't. Back and forth. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. She finally said, All right, I'll take it. But I'll give the money to the stock. Is that all right with you? Okay. She'll give the money instead of paying. Paying her, she'll take the money and give it to check. Okay. Oh, what charity? Oh, I say, there is an insane charity here. And once a week, I go and I buy falafel, and I bring it to the insane people, to the mental ill people. I bring them falafel. Here's just a woman. She didn't go to bar now. She never was part of the Vietnam people. It is. She doesn't know what rock is. She sits in, in one room, and in her mind, she perceives that the mentally ill, they too have to be happy, and they, have, they too have to have some happiness and some enjoyment. So once a week she goes and brings falafel to the insane people. This is a harvest. This is a protection. This is a person who is not egocentric and thinking, what do I need? And I'm, and I'm almost blind and I'm sick and I'm alone. This is a person who has penetrated a barrier. This is a person who sees something that in New York, 10 million people, I tell you, 99% of all the people in New York are I mean, 99% of 10 million do not have that. They will know what you're talking about. They'll say she's great. So what, what's the chat? The chat is that 99% of the people in New York City their dimensions of their humanity shriveled up. Their vision is very narrow. They do not perceive and they do not see. This woman has knowledge in her head. There's a knowledge in her head. There is a reasoning in her head. There's a logic in her head. She's a past Yerushalayim. She grew up in Yerushalayim between Sadiq and that she perceives from her house to the needs of the neglected and the abandoned. That's the protection of the place. That's just elevating the breeze. This is 
a dimension that 99% of the people in New York City do not have and do not understand. I give you this as an example. This is a break. I was in, in a, a few a years ago, I was in Paris. So they have the, 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 the metro more than a few years ago. I was in France the first time they have the metro, the train, the underground train. Come on the train is assigned. Priorities on who gets the seats. An old man moved his soul to a pregnant woman. Go on the train in New York City if you're not afraid. Go on the train. It's not the question. The humanity here is so small. There's no perception. There is, there is, humanity can expand and it's, it's resilient and it can shrivel up. The toughness of the Bria is to take all the colors of the Bria and to be oila and oila and oila and oila. When it says in Mishle, when Shloim Amela says in Mishle that the Torah causes joy to the Rabbi one where it is the toy of the Rabbi from Shashuim. It means that the Rabbi Nishalom's purpose in the Bria is fulfilled through the Torah. In the Torah, it, there is the wisdom in the Torah which says that there is where the ultimate goal of the Bria is. The ultimate goals of the Bria is not in Greenwich Village. It's not in the village boy. As a bond scholars and sophisticated they think they are, and righteous as they think they are. The goal of the Bria, that which causes the rebellion of joy, is, is in the wisdom of the toilet. When someone learns Torah, a man and a woman, and takes our human head, you know how to look at a person? Do, do we know how to look at a person? Do, do we in this room, not talking about anything, do we know how to look at a person, just to look at a person? A young man came to me today, today, we were talking. Very hush of a young man, his coin said to me, I have a problem. says to me, I find myself talking to myself. He said, that's no problem. He says, mentally, he's always talking to myself. Said, that's, that's no problem. No, wait a minute, that's you are talking to myself. What are you talking to yourself about? He says, if somebody said something to me that hurt me or this, that I dislike, so I find myself talking to myself, I should have told them so and so. I should have said these words. I could have told him this or that would have hurt him, that would have cut him down. Then I find myself thinking hostile thoughts. The incident happened two months ago. The person forgot about it. And I find in my mind, I think such cruel things that if I ever let my mouth say the answers, it would devastate the other person. He said, I think of the cutest, sharpest thing to cut a person down a piece. Why should I? Why should I spend this kind of thing? There's a hostility in me. He said, I look at a person, I'm looking for the first thing, what's wrong? Why shouldn't he say, I look at a person, the first thing, that what's right? We don't know how to look at a person. You, in order to know I showed him a rabbi in the in the Shari Shubit. The rabbi in in discussing the Yisurim of Lashon Hara, not to get into the halacha aspect of it, he says, it's one of the things that he says there is, he says, it's a sick look. Yeah, you look at a person, 
you're looking to see what's wrong, what's negative, what, where's he making a mistake, where is he inferior, where is he says, that look is a sick look. We don't know. What do you mean a sick look? I dress very well, I have a nice house with furniture, I have money to that. I'm sick. Show sure you're sick, you don't know how to look at it. The toilet, when this is far from a person, if we have such a malaise, such a malady, then we are far from the tachlis of the Bri. The tachlis of the Bri was that, that the, the, the Tzela Malikim should, should be oiled, and the Aliyah is in the heart. What is a person if not his ashkot is not their attitudes? If we have sick attitudes, we have sick people. If we could sit home and have the nobility to think about someone who is totally insane, who is out of contact with reality, to bring his character. They are hard to a sashem alikecha. You know how you make ayin ava. You know how we have contact with the rabbi shalom. It's through contact with the gold that makes him full of happiness. That's the whole yatzol. There's no other way. A person could live 120 years and not know what makes the rabbi shalom. I want this, and I say this, and I say that. And, 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 and this one told me, and the other one says, and that's why he says, and this group says, and that group says, and the other group says. That's not the path of the priest. I have this Hashem, you can't have a bad person. Without Torah's ethical culture, and we know the great impact that the ethical culture society has on the country. No. And with Hashem, to a person taking care of the Not to say, I love, I love, I love this, I love that, I love the other thing, I love the other one. That, that's not so. The Ahakta through the Holy Hadzor. You cannot know that the Shia coin of a person, the dimensions of a person without looking in the Rebbeinu Shalom's prayer. Looking and learning the Rebbeinu Shalom's prayer. Looking and learning in the Rebbeinu Shalom's prayer. Learning the Rebbeinu Shalom's prayer. And a person taking his mind and putting the, and, 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 and hope that his mind should take the attitude of Torah. His mind should have the courage. I want to see the Torah out there. I want to look at the world through the glasses of the Torah that's out there. That's the key of our heart. Our minds is not a, our mind, the problem of our of the modern mind, the modern Jewish mind, the so-called Jewish mind is it's not a Jewish doctor, it's a public story. Everything goes in there, everything's like you know, they are liberal. Everything goes into our mind without discretion, without investigation, everything goes into our mind and it is into our mind. Yiddish guy you, you can only know in the Torah world.
have to rebuild our world. The only way we can rebuild our world is to be looking into the looking into the soul. To see that's Avos Hashem. The definition of our Hamsa is the Hoyu Avor. Without the Hoyu Avor, even without our wanting to learn, just the women, women again. Children, we cannot give over to your children, and the women do not know 